Hello and welcome back. So, the last time we spoke, I talked about this little handheld console here. We did a very quick, very brief review and did a little bit of a teardown on the on this, the Sega Mega Drive Arcade Ultimate Portable. So, I mentioned in the last video that the reason I bought this in the first place was because it's a handheld system with six face buttons and I was looking for something which I could potentially stuff a Raspberry Pi into and turn into a handheld gaming system. So having watched uh, my last video, having had a look at this, torn this apart and uh, done a little bit more uh, little bit more investigation, I had my doubts as to whether or not you were going to be able to get a Raspberry Pi and all the gubbins you need inside this thing because it is phenomenally small. So. Let me just give you a bit of an idea of what we're talking about here. So, this is the Raspberry Pi 2B. This is the current top of the right, uh, top of the line model. So, if we just uh, put these next to each other here, we'll see that there is absolutely sod all room here. So, there's not an awful lot of space, and especially when it comes to vertically there. So. All this thing, I have my doubts as to whether or not it would go in. All of these connectors would have to come off, certainly. This uh, GPIO input-output header here would definitely have to come off. All these connectors would have to go. It would have to go on a serious diet to even think about getting into this case. Fortunately, there is a slightly better option than this full-size, this massive beast here. We do also have this model, which is the A+. So. This is slightly, well, it's obviously it's a lot, lot smaller. Um, it's nowhere near as powerful. So this is a single core board with, uh, do you know what? I can't actually remember how much memory is on there now. I'm fairly sure it's got half a gig of RAM, whereas this is a quad core board and this has a full gig of memory. And if I remember correctly, this is default 900 megahertz. And that was my phone. And this is default 700 megahertz, but you can overclock them either way. So either way, this is definitely the better board. Whoops, throwing it around. This is definitely the better board for trying to cram in here because although there's still a bit of a problem with the height here, there's a lot more space. You've got a lot more space with this. There are fewer connectors to try to have to rip off. Um, they would all still have to come off. So this GPI ho, GPI ho, GPI ho. I'll get there in a minute. GPIO header would have to come off. Uh, this USB connector, all of this would still have to come off before we could get it in here. Um, the problem, the problem that you have to worry about is that um, I won't be able to use. There's a lot more stuff that you're going to need to put in here just besides the Raspberry Pi board. So you're going to need something which can manage the battery charge. You're going to need something which can. Um, man regulate the battery voltage because this thing probably runs straight off the battery voltage and has a number of converters and what have you whereas this is going to need uh, 5 volts so you're going to need some kind of uh, voltage regulator there um, you're also going to need a new screen for it and all the hardware that the new screen needs because the screen in this thing is going to be a completely custom job not necessarily custom um, but it's going to be but it's uh, you're not going to be able to reuse it in short so you're going to get a need to get a new screen in there you're going to need to get some kind of audio amplifier in here as well for this you need um, a board which sits behind these buttons so that you can actually use them and interface them with the raspberry there's a hell of a lot of stuff that's got to go in here so even with this because this is such a small thing i have my doubts as to whether or not you would be able to get this comfortably in here and get all the gubbins in there that you need however however those glorious bastards over at the raspberry pi foundation have today released this it's tiny it's ridiculously small there is absolutely no problem with the size there. So this is the Raspberry Pi Zero. This is actually the same spec as this thing. So this is a single core version, 512 meg of memory. Uh, this is set to run at one gigahertz by default, whereas this runs at 700 megahertz. You've still got your one single USB port. Now, which way around are they? You've got your one single USB port, micro USB for power. Slightly different because this is a USB micro USB that they're using for data, which is unusual. Um, you do also have a mini HDMI, not micro, mini HDMI connector over here. 
and you'll also notice that the GPIO header, although you can use it, it's just not populated. There's no pins soldered in there for you. But it is the same, more or less the same basic spec, uh, just with a few things like your camera connector and display connector removed. Uh, they're using tiny little, little connectors. So the really incredible thing about this thing is that, so first of all, if you haven't seen it before, let me uh, reach back here and grab my copy of it. I should have uh, done this beforehand. There's a magazine that they produce, that one there called the Magpie, and it's officially owned by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. They put it out, what have you. They gave this away for free on December's issue of the Magpie magazine. Even if you can't get your hands on the Magpie, they're selling this for $5 or £4 in the UK. I I can't get my head around how they can do it. I <laughs> Apparently they do make a profit on all the models they sell and I, it, it boggles the mind. This is a proper full-fledged desktop computer. Okay, yes, you're gonna need things like a, a US, micro USB to regular USB on the go. You're gonna need a mini HDMI to regular HDMI. You need a micro SD card for storage, but nevertheless, it's a four pound computer and it will be more than ideal for what I need to run in here. There is going to be absolutely no concern about space here whatsoever. None whatsoever. I'm not even gonna to have to desolder anything here. It's incredible. I probably will desolder things just so I can, I wanna wire directly to these micro USB ports, for example, instead of using something which plugs in here because, you know, cables are big, bulky old things. Um, I'm probably gonna solder directly there. Um, just to save a bit of space. However, that's pretty much it. It's pretty much ready to go. So, there's obviously gonna be a lot of work that needs to go into this. Um, there's a lot of work that's gonna take this from a working thing that it is now to running a Raspberry Pi inside it. So, the first thing I think I need to work out is what I'm going to do about the screen. So, this by default will have um, the Raspberry Pi by default uses HDMI as its video output. This, if I remember correctly, is a 2.8 inch screen. You will not get a 2.8 inch HDMI screen. Not a chance in hell. However, there are other options. You could use a small composite video connect. I would rather not have to use composite video screens, but there are two pins down here. You probably can't see it very well on my camera, but there are two pins down here which you can solder directly to, which are composite video output. All the models of Raspberry Pi have got composite video. This jack is combined audio and composite video, so there is that. There are also screens which connect directly to the GPIO header and let you use these pins as a screen. So there are a lot of options either way. So screen is going to be the, my first task, I think. Then what I'm going to need to do is design some kind of custom PCB which uh, I can mount buttons to for this. What I will probably do here, well, what I do here, how I wire up these buttons to the actual Pi is going to depend entirely on what screen I choose. So yeah, I'm not entirely sure yet. I will have to go away and think about that one. One major headache or one headache I think I'm going to have with this is that this does not include any audio output except HDMI audio and that is going to be a bit of a kick in the balls. So on all other models of Raspberry Pi you've got this uh, four, pole, four pole audio jack here which has got a uh, line out and also video output as well but it does have analog audio output on board. This, however, the Pi Zero does not have any analog audio circuitry whatsoever. It's all digital, so I'm gonna have to go away and think about what kind of audio I'm gonna, how I'm gonna get the audio out, because obviously I need the sound out of the damn thing, and I would still like to be able to use the headphone connector, if at all possible. However, I think the screen, what I do about the screen is going to dictate everything else. So, Thank you for watching. Thought I'd just do a quick update. Um, this thing came completely out of the blue. They've been hinting that there was going to be something announced in this uh, in this latest issue of their magazine, but I had I don't think anybody had any idea that they would be releasing something so. Well, for starters, that they would be releasing a new model, and 
that they would be releasing something so small. Look at it, it's ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous how they can make that for four pounds. I've bought pints more expensive than that. I've probably bought coffee more expensive than that. And it's phenomenal. I can't, I cannot get my head around it. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Um, as soon as I do actually manage to make any progress on this, I will keep this video, I will keep this series up to date. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.